you know how a circle can be used to study angles? In this lesson, you will find the values of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions by using a unit circle. First, let's review. If you haven't already, memorize the ratio of sides in both the 30-60-90 and 45-45-90 triangles. If you remember that the smallest angle must be across from the smallest side and the largest angle across from the largest side, you won't get the side switched. For the 1, 2, radical 3, 1 is the smallest, it goes across from the 30 degree angle. 2 is the largest, so it's the hypotenuse. In a previous lesson, we learned to write the trig ratios using x, y, and r instead of adjacent opposite and hypotenuse. Some students think that it doesn't matter if you draw the reference triangle to the x-axis or the y-axis and will draw it as shown. This is incorrect because the angle theta is not in standard position. Drawing it incorrectly may switch the sine and the cosine. Don't do it. A unit circle has a radius of 1. When r is equal to 1, the cosine and sine ratios simplify to x and y, which are the coordinates of points on the unit circle. That means that you can look at the coordinates of the point where the terminal ray crosses the unit circle and you will have the cosine and sine of the angle much easier. The tangent is the ratio of these coordinates, y divided by x. Now let's take another look at the special triangles. Because we are interested in the unit circle where r is equal to 1, we want the hypotenuse of our triangles to be 1. So let's make similar triangles by dividing the 30, 60, 90 by 2 to get the ratio 1 half, 1, radical 3 over 2. For the 45, 45, 90 triangle, we'll divide by radical 2. After we simplify, we get radical 2 over 2, radical 2 over 2, 1. Now let's put our special triangle in the unit circle and use what we've already learned about cosine and sine, that they are the coordinates of the point where the terminal ray crosses the unit circle. For a 30 degree angle, We'll use our 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we see that those coordinates would be square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. The cosine is the x-coordinate, and the sine is the y-coordinate. Tangent is y divided by x. Remember that to divide by a fraction is to multiply by its reciprocal. We rationalize when there's a radical in the denominator, so the tangent of 30, 30 degrees becomes radical 3 over 3. For a 45 degree angle, we'll use our 45, 45, 90 triangle, and we see that the coordinates would be radical 2 over 2 for both the x and the y. So the cosine and the sine are both the square root of 2 over 2. The tangent is y over x, and since x and y are the same for 45 degrees, we have a number divided by itself which is 1. For a 60 degree angle, we'll use the 30, 60, 90 triangle again, but we have to orient it so that the 60 degrees is in standard position. Now we see that the coordinates are 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Remember to get the smallest side 1 half across from the smallest angle 30. The cosine is the x-coordinate, the sine is the y-coordinate, and the tangent is y over x. Again, remember that to divide by a fraction is to multiply by its reciprocal, so the tangent of 60 degrees is radical 3. Would you like an easy way to remember the sine and cosine of all these angles? This chart may help. First, list all of the special angles in the first quadrant, including 0 and 90 degrees. Next, fill in fractions that have a radical in the numerator and 2 for the denominator. Now we'll fill in the blanks, starting at the sine of 
zero degrees with zero and then go down the column one two three four and up the next column zero one two three four then simplify and you've got them all in this lesson you found the values of the sine cosine and tangent functions by using a unit circle